General from Afghanistan. Our next guest grilled the generals over the number of troops that were needed to keep the region stable. Watch. In order to hold Bagram, I'd have needed to probably push in 5,000 more troops on the ground. So that would have been a, a significant decision to hold Bagram. Uh, and we were under the direction to go to zero. So it would require a basic policy uh, directive to change the plan. Joining us now to discuss is Republican Congressman from Colorado and member of the House Armed Services Committee, Doug Lambert. Congressman, thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Good morning to you. As we watched in the hearing yesterday, you continued to press these generals and General McKenzie about the number of recommended troops Ultimately, as we know, President Biden decided to bring every troop home. What stood out to you the most from the hearing yesterday? What stood out to me, Emma, is that the generals had one set of advice and the president followed a, an entirely different course of action. He did not follow their, I think, pretty sound uh, military advice. They knew what they were doing. And they told him this is what it takes to get the job done without turmoil, without danger to Americans. And he disregarded them. The president was stubborn. I say he was pigheaded. He was so stubborn that he would refuse to listen to them. And then they had to follow his orders. You know, they had to ultimately give in to what he said, even though he pretty much disregarded everything they did say. I think the buck stops with him. He's not acknowledging it. He's not letting himself be accountable. But really, the buck stops with President Biden. He's the one who made this such a bad evacuation and bad withdrawal. Based on the president's decisions, as you rightly point out, of course, him serving as commander in chief, making the final call. Uh, how do you think that has impacted not only our foreign policy, but also here domestically uh, as safety when it comes to possible threats in the future from the region? The problem with him being such a poor leader is that it emboldens our adversaries, the bad guys who may want to do damage to our country, whether it's terrorists or even state actors who will press for advantages around the region like Russia and China. And it discourages our adversaries and our allies, excuse me, our allies and our partners. It discourages them because they don't see America as a reliable partner. So whether it's those who want to help us or those who want to hurt us, it's the wrong thing happening in both cases. Hmm. Uh, there were also questions about that drone strike that was uh, assumed to have killed members of ISIS-K, and yet, as we've learned more, unfortunately, civilians were struck. Uh, the generals responded when they made that realization. Here's that moment. At what point did you know that the strike was bad, that it hit civilians? Well, so we knew the strike hit civilians within four or five hours. General Milley signed. Same thing. Uh, Congressman, your reaction when you heard that, that they knew almost immediately, uh, and, and yet we're, we're still waiting for some sort of answers or accountability, even for final decisions on that. One of the lessons from that, Emma, is that when they talk about over-the-horizon capability in the future, where we try to get intelligence from other countries and do strikes from other countries, we couldn't even really do a good job in that instance when we were there with boots on the ground. How much harder will it be to do the so-called over-the-horizon strikes when we don't have any boots on the ground? It's going to be almost impossible. And yet they're saying that that's our fallback position. The president says, oh, we can do fine with going after terrorists from over the horizon. No, it's much more difficult. It's logistically much more difficult, and the intelligence is much harder to come by. I'd like to switch gears slightly, talk to you about uh, this idea, accusations, that the Pentagon is turning more politicized. General Milley said this when he was asked if he could comment on President Biden. Here's the general. First of all, I'm not going to judge a president. That's the job of the American people. That's the job of Congress. A brief comment there saying he's not going to judge the president based on his final decision in regards to Afghanistan. Yet we do know that he spoke with Bob Woodward about former President Trump for Woodward's new book. Do you think that decision was appropriate? I don't think he should have talked to Bob Woodward. Uh, Bob Woodward, I don't think, is doing uh, the Trump administration any favors. He's just out to find dirt. I'm not sure that Bob Woodward even reported things 
that would have been favorable to the president's image. Uh, who knows whether he did that or not? I'm concerned that the top military generals are more concerned with social issues like critical race theory than with making our soldiers, sailors, airmen, guardians, and Marines the best equipped and best trained in the world. That's what their real job is, not all these social issues that the Biden administration is pushing on them from the top down. Hmm. Congressman Doug Lambard of Colorado joining us live on the program. Congressman, thank you. We appreciate the time. Thank you.